see, please. Um, so good evening. No, good evening. Good afternoon. Sorry. Um, so welcome to the special uh, event of the Jim Thompson Art Center. Uh, today we are very happy to host uh, three artists who will who participate in this exhibition. Missing link at the other side of the uh, of the building. Uh, actually, this show is about the modernized uh, session period and the, how the the Southeast Asian um, society has been transformed since pre-modern to, to present. And it's all about the video art and the movie image. And it's been open since the last two months. And we would, uh, I break this exhibition into two parts. Then the first part will end this July. It's all about modernization and urbanization. And the second part will be start in August, which is focused on uh, diaspora and identity issues. And I'm very happy to invite the artists from both sections here today. Um, so let me introduce you to um, the first artist who will uh, present um, this, this afternoon. Uh, this is Maria Tanikuche from. Uh, Maria based in Manila. She studied a um, master's degree in Goldsmith, and she's been working uh, in the fields of, you know, different media, you know, painting and video art, and um, and I'm I'm very happy to learn that she was just shortlisted with the Hugo Boss uh, Prize this year, and it will be I don't know when it will be announced, you know, but it's not in November in Shanghai. And um, so she will give us, um, you know, her background, you know, and her ideas, how she started uh, her practice from the beginning of her career. And I would like to to uh, to share this with us, you know, in the after 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 the first session, you know, I, the artist will present the work, and in the second part, after our break, you know, we will have the discussion with, among ourselves and the floor. And on my right is um, Masahiro Sugano. And Anida Yuati from Phnom Penh, Osaka, and Chicago, where they met. Um, these two artists, they collaborated since um, when they come back to Phnom Penh. And um, they, they practice in different media. So Masahiro is more focused on uh, film and video. And Anida was in uh, poetry, reading, performance. And they did a very wonderful collaboration. Uh, and start a lot of different projects, you know, with the photography um, festival, and also do something with the public art. And I'm I'm really happy to have them here, even though uh, uh, their work will be shown in the second chapters. But because of the time and schedule conflict, she will have to she will have to go to America. So we try to fly her in, you know, and kind of uh, give you the preview of the second chapters. So. Let me give up the, the, the microphone to Maria, and we will have a short Thai translation by Mary Alpasana. Thank you. <laughs> Brief translation. into uh, three parts. The first part will, will deal with uh, the brick paintings that I've been doing for the last um, six or seven years. Uh, this forms a very big part of, of my practice and I put a lot of energy in, into it. Um, and so I'll do that first. And then uh, the second part is going to be um, a couple of other painting projects that I, I've done. Uh, we're just going to do that very quickly um, just maybe two or three minutes on that. And then the third part will be the other uh, other work that I do, um, sculptures, videos, and, and installations and drawings. Uh, uh, Maria 
จะแบ่งสไลด์ออกเป็น3ส่วนด้วยกันนะคะก็คือจะพูดเป็นแต่ละส่วนเป็นย่อยๆนะคะส่วนแรกก็จะพูดถึงงานชิ้น brick paintings นะคะซึ่งใช้เวลาเวลาทำประมาณ 6-7 ปีแล้วก็ส่วนที่2จะเป็นงาน painting ประเภทอื่นๆแล้วก็ส่วนที่3จะเป็นงานที่ใช้ที่มันอื่นเป็น sculpture เป็นวิดีโอแล้วก็เป็น installation นะคะ Um, okay, so these are I've I've uh, laid out and assorted a collection of brick paintings that I've done. Um, some of these are the earliest works. Um, the brick paintings are really about kind of an artist um, like curating his own time. So it's about architecture and um, it's about creating uh, your own framework for your practice. Um, sometimes the artist is subject to to a lot of Kind of other time structures that that we have to deal with, for example, in the production process, or in, for example, exhibition making, or for example, art works. And I think in the very beginning, in 2008, I was thinking a lot about you know how to create a kind of a time, kind of a my own time. Uh, so and this I mix this with an interest in in painting. Um, how the bricks are made? Oh, maybe you should. Sorry. Sorry. Ah, this is the beginning of the process of Maria. She is interested in the process of creating time or the process of creating time. So, if we look at the process of creating time, there will be a process of creating time. For example, production, during the process of creating time, or the process of creating time, or the process of creating time for exhibition, or the process of creating time for art fair. สิ่งที่มาเรียนเขสนใจเนี่ยเรื่องของการที่จะสร้างแล้วก็กำหนดเวลาในการทำงานของตัวเองเป็นเรื่องของสตรัคเจอร์ของฐานที่ที่มาเรียนเขสนใจนะคะ Okay this is the first brick painting um, I I make it it's actually really a painting on on canvas it's acrylic on canvas and what I do is that I I paint in a gray layer first on top of the canvas and this is painted uh, on the floor um, And then I draw in a, a pencil brick pattern, and then I paint in the bricks one by one. This is an example of the scale. เป็นบนแคนวาสก่อนนะคะเป็นเกรย์เป็นพื้นเบสสีเทาแล้วก็ใช้ดินสอล่างเป็นโครงล่างของแพทเทิร์นของที่เป็นบริกส์แล้วก็วาดบริกส์แต่ละชิ้นเป็นแพทเทิร์นของแต่ละบริกส์ของแต่ละรูปค่ะ I think uh, initially I had a different relationship with uh, this this particular work and I think if it's worth to mention that I um, so far now I've experimented on around 50 or 60 of these brick paintings in The same scale. Um, initially, at the start, um, I saw them first as as paintings and exploring, you know, surface and all that. But eventually, I realized that they worked in another way in in my practice, and and that maybe it's best to describe them more as architecture. And they're not actually they're not actually um, abstract paintings. They're actually renderings of um, a larger scale architectural project. Uh, now, this uh, Maria Tan is in the uh, 50, about 50 to 60 can be seen. And at the first stage, they look at the painting in the form of a painting. Uh, one or two. But after that, when they start to do it, they feel that they are looking at the painting as a more abstract painting. It's not an abstract painting, but it's a more abstract painting as a more abstract painting. Um, so scale-wise, I've, I've worked on many different sizes, but I, over the last three or four years, I've settled into an average height around 10 feet. And um, here, let me show you the next photo. I think that's clearer. And this is a detail of the painting. Um, so I, I usually show them alongside the videos as well, and um, as I said, like my relationship with them has um, changed or like, evolved over time. 
and, and now sometimes I see them more like uh, like a speech bubble or more like code, kind of like um, or more like static, like something that you encounter when you first turn on, um, let's say, the big screen and there is no image. ก็เริ่มเป็นไปคือพอตอนหลังๆเค้าทํางานควบคู่กับงานวิดีโอจะมีการฉายงานวิดีโอคู่กับงานแคมปิ้งด้วยซึ่งเค้าต่างหากเค
Okay, um, this is an exhibition at the Cell Project Space in, in London, and these are not all of my works, but I have uh, a few things in there. Uh, this is an example of the drawing. Um, it's, it's kind of a graphite dust on top of paper, and, you know, graphite dust. Um, a lot of my early thoughts were about how information is reflected, so like how kind of how surfaces re reflect back or like talk to you, like reflect information back. And and so this would be the subject of a uh, few drawings. Okay, um, this is a still from a video. It's a four minute video called uh, Miss 421. And I, I took these photographs when I was a tourist in, in Spain, in Barcelona. Um, and I used them as slides to, to create this video. Unfortunately, I can't show you the video right now because uh, we don't have too much time. Yeah, it is uh, the Miss Barcelona Pavilion. It is uh, just made in the 30s. And uh, I think it's a very beautiful kind of a ground zero of, of modernism. And so I went there as a tourist and I snapped, you know, not, not, not so good photos. Um, but eventually I kept them and I was wondering what to do with them. And eventually what came out of it was this, this video that uses around 24 photographs. And I, sp I spaced them out like four seconds between each photograph and repeated it three times. But each time, it, each time that I repeated it, I, I took out two seconds from, from the space between photos so that, so that it would create this kind of, um, kind of a pressured environment wherein the photos would start to come on a lot faster. คือเป็นรูปถ่ายของพาวิเลียนที่ในเมืองเอ่อสเปนนะคะคือพาวิเลียนเนี่ยเป็นพาวิเลียนเอ่อเก่าแก่แล้วก็พูดถึงอาจจ
I, I took this Barcelona pavilion experience with me for for I think quite a while and another work came another work came out of it, which is uh, this video installation and it's called um, Don's Arms, untitled Don's Arms. Um, and it takes its name from the sculpture that they have in the pond in the Mar in the Barcelona Pavilion, which is a sculpture by George Kolbe, uh, a German sculptor. And it's an it's a it's a woman basically shielding herself from from mourning from the sun. And somehow I had this complete I don't know I think I completely fetishized it and I really wanted a piece of that piece of that sculpture and so I had I, I traveled to uh, Romblon Island which is kind of it's, it's kind of like the Philippine um, marble island it's like the, the Carrara of, of the Philippines and and I had I had my own arms made I couldn't afford to make the whole sculpture so I just I just took the arms, which I thought were very crucial in, in the sculpture. Um, so these are stills from the video. Maybe now I, I think, like in retrospect, I also wanted to subject the subject the sculptures to a little bit of violence. It's another still from from the video. Okay, so um, what happens is. Um, is that on the left, uh, the left, the left arm is on the left monitor, and then uh, so it's uh, the making of the arm is shown uh, kind of edited in like 20 minutes on the left monitor, and then that turns off and it turns green, and then on the right monitor the, the right arm is is being um, here is a reinstallation of the video in, in Antwerp. Ooh, okay. All right, so at this point, I really want to show you guys the video that I have um, installed in, in the space. Do you still have time for it? Um, if you just give me a moment to, to shift. There's no sound.
Okay, thank you for your patience for now going back to regular programming. Okay, uh, so this video was uh, a commission from the Lux Associate Artist Program and that I was a part of in, in around 2009-2010. And the Lux Associate Artist Program is uh, a residency in, in London for artists who work with a moving image. And it happened in the year that we were finishing, um, we were thinking of a project and somehow it was decided that it was going to be about um, what kind of our, our views on the American, and it also just happened that I was not living in uh, I was not living in London anymore. It just got a bit too expensive for me, so I moved back to to Manila around the time. And I guess um, doing research on jeeps was like a very obvious choice. All I had to do was look out of my studio window and I could see a hundred of them. Um, so I did a lot of I visited a lot of um, of workshops and. Uh, jeepney workshops and uh, I was searching for a kind of archetypal jeep because you know since since jeepneys came out um, in kind of like the early 50s as as vehicles that were uh, refashioned from American Willys jeeps uh, left over from the Second World War um, there have been you know, many, many forms and, and many ways to, you know, people have been picking them up and they come in all sorts of colors and with lots of decorations. And I, I was looking for uh, a pair of jeep. And so I, I found it in San Pablo and in this place called uh, Celestial Motors. And I, I tried to borrow the jeep because I really wanted to. งานที่นี้นะคะทําขึ้นตอนที่มาเรียนเนี่ยเอ่อเข้าร่วมโปรแกรมกับทางลักษณ์นะคะเป็นเอเจนซี่เอ่อที่ดูแลเรื่องงาน
อย่างตัวที่ห้องวันตั้งใช่ค่ะเป็นรถของอเมริกันนะคะแล้วก็ถ่ายในสตูดิโอแล้วก็มาเรียนเนี่ยชื่นชอบวิธีในการถ่ายงานโฆษณาชิ้นนี้มากแล้วเห็นถึงความคือคือถ่ายในสตูดิโอแล้วมันมีความทงชัดมีความหลากหลายแล้วก็มีความพิเศษมากๆในการถ่ายแล้วก็เลยอินสปายหรือว่าได้รับแรงบันดาลใจมาจากงานโฆษณาชิ้นนั้นแล้วก็เลยมาเออเริ่มทําผลงานของตัวเองชิ้นนี้นะคะ Yeah so um, like I said like I really wanted to shift the kind of fetishizing gaze and this admiration that That the t h video have for or that Pontiac onto onto the jeep. Um, so I found the jeep and I I tried to borrow it, but it was actually already sold. Someone owned it. It's an overseas foreign worker who worked in in Taipei, and uh, the owners of the uh, the owners of the workshop were were you know, were not willing to let me borrow the jeep for a day to bring it to a studio in in Manila to shoot it. And so what we had to do was to uh, create the create the studio on site. So this is actually um, the unedited kind of stills of the G. ก็คือตอนแรกมาเรียนอยากที่จะขอยืมแล้วก็เข้าไปขายในสตูดิโอแต่ว่าในรถคันนี้มีเจ้าของแล้วก็มีคนซื้อไปแล้วแล้วก็เขาไม่อนุญาตให้นำไปขายที่สตูดิโอได้ก็เลยเขาก็เลยต้องเซฟอัพสตูดิโอขึ้นมา So we shot this for a day. We, we brought some equipment. I I, I worked with uh, a couple of other people, helping assist uh, taking video and doing lights. Um, of course, it wasn't when it came out. It still was not you know perfectly clean. So when I had when I already edited the the video, I, I sent it to someone in uh, in Indonesia. Who's an expert in rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is the process of erasing. ก็เขาบอกว่าตอนแรกที่ถ่ายมันก็ยังไม่ได้เนียบมากเหมือนถ่ายในสตูดิโอจริงๆนะเขาส่งไปที่ตับที่อินโดที่มีโปรเซสในการลบหรือว่าเหมือนโฟล์ช็อปรูปแต่ว่าได้เป็นวิดีโอก็คือทำเฟรมไปเฟรมคือแต่เฟรมแต่อันไปเลยเราเรียนเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่องเรื่
few slides is, is going to be of, of a residency that I did in New Zealand. Um, I had a residency with an American artist called Adam Abikainen, and I. It was a kind of weird time to go there because I was trying to rest. I was trying to figure out, you know, what to work on next. And so what happened was that I like absorbed the other artist and the curator into into the works that I was going to make. So a lot of the works were about making work. And for so for example, this this video and that is Adam's hand, and. Um, so I tried to make this um, uh, a screenplay out of 12 slides, and this is one of the first slides, and it was going to be a screenplay for for a film. ไม่ได้อยากที่จะทํางานแล้วก็อยากที่จะพักแล้วก็ช่วยเซเรนซี่เนี่ยเค้าก็เลยมาถือว่าอยากจะทํางานในลักษณะแบบไหนก็เลย
which is which was commissioned by actually an art pair in, in, in Manila and there it is in the space. And and so since it was an art pair, I was really like I, I don't know what to do for the special projects and I thought maybe I would kind of work on you know how how artists and how kind of um, artists are completely kind of thought of as kind of products and and that there's or or that, that they have like a sick kind of signature style. So I thought maybe I would like redo my signature. That's not really my signature, but um, so I thought okay, Metaniguchi means in, in English mouth of the mountain. And so I thought maybe I'd create a signature out of um, that idea, but but also would be kind of like a little bit lighter, a bit more fleeting. So kind of like a bird, which I related to kind of this block. When the, the when the paper is a is a block, it looks really solid, and then in sheets, then it starts to kind of want to fly away as well. And even yeah, this is something I fan, nah. How this is about the topic of the product and the design. This is about the signature or the license of the design, nah. แล้วก็จริงๆรูปแบบของตัวไลเซนส์เนี่ยมันไม่ใช่ของอารีย์แต่ว่ามันเป็นเอ่อเท็กซ์ที่มาแปลว่านักออฟเดอะมาวท์เ
has an idea for a film, I often take the producer role, or I take I I take care of the costumes and art direction and um, pulling everybody together to make it happen. But when I have a performance project, he often takes the role as a documenter and really brings a different eye, a cinematic eye, to capturing. Uh, uh, a kind of documentation of performance that makes it a work of art in and of itself, which has also catapulted my work to another level. Um, so we are gonna first, oh, yes, I forgot. Let's see what you're gonna say, Mary, in two seconds. <laughs> เดือนนิดนึงว่าจริงเค้าเป็นพาร์ทเนอร์กันในชีวิตจริงด้วยแล้วก็เป็นคอลลาบอเรเตอร์กันในในฐานะทํางานแล้วก็เพื่อนว่
signs, terrorists sprayed in red paint across their family's driveway. Terrorists on board, written on their white car. Awoke to find, freeway sign says, kill all Arabs. Elevator sign says, kill all towel heads. A Pakistani living in LA awoke to find his car scratched across the right side with the words, nuke em. Awoke to find 300 march on a mosque in Bridgeview, Illinois. 300 American flags shout, USA, USA. Mosque awoke to find a 19-year-old shouting, I'm proud to be American. I hate Arabs, and I always have. Firebomb toss. Taxi driver pulled out and beaten. Vandals in Collingswood, New Jersey attacked two Indian-owned businesses. Vandals spray painted, leave town. So this piece you can find online, and it was awarded the grand prize winner of the um, One Chicago, One Nation um, uh, film competition. Um, and this piece is about hate crimes um, that occurred against uh, people who were perceived as Muslims. They weren't necessarily Muslim, but because there's a perception of who is a Muslim, many people were targeted after the attacks of September 11th in the United States. Uh, yeah. uh, can you get up on one tea? Uh, is it a festival? Or is it one uh, online competition. Uh, an online competition. And it's called One Chicago, One Nation. It's called One Tea. And this topic is talking about hate crime or an activism that has been born from อาชญากรรมที่เกิดจากความเกลียดชังแล้วก็คือมันพูดถึงเรื่องของเชื้อชาติพูดถึงเรื่องของอัตลักษณ์ต่างๆก็คือพูดถึง perception หรือการรับรู้ความเป็นมุสลิมนะคะถึงแม้ว่าคนนั้นจะไม่ได้เป็นมุสลิมแต่ว่าก็ถูกมองในฐานะที่เป็นมุสลิมนะคะ So this collaboration was the beginning of Masa and I performing and uh, developing this film together um, I uh, came out of poetry which is also called spoken word poetry which is an oral form of uh, performing original poetry. And this piece um, combined portraits of everyday Muslims. So everybody that you see on there are Muslims and identify as Muslim in the Chicagoland area, including my parents that you just saw there. And then um, it combined dance um, a specific form here that we're exploring is um, Bhutto dance in combination with uh, Cambodian contemporary dance, which you'll see him transform at the end into. Um, and spoken word poetry and performance art in that. Um, all of that into this video. In the video, we can see the image of the life of the Muslim people, and the father of Anida. มีเป็นดนซ์หรือว่าการเต้นรำที่เรียกว่าบูโทเป็นดนซ์ของกัมพูชานะคะอะไรบูโตอ๋อแล้วอูตบูโตเป็นดนซ์ของญี่ปุ่นนะคะแล้วก็ส่วนของกวีแล้วก็ส่วนของเพอร์ฟอร์แมนซ์หรือว่าการแสดงส่วนของอนิดานะคะ This piece was almost disqualified from the contest originally for some crazy reason where they felt that it might be too abstract. Which is absolutely not the case. It's completely narrative. Um, then uh, I also have a gallery piece that goes with this, where I put all of the words of the poem on a wall. It's a white wall with white vinyl letters with a poem on it. And two weeks into the installation, it was vandalized. ก็คืองานชิ้นนี้จะมีในส่วนที่แสดงส่วนที่เป็นแกลเลอรี่ด้วยนะคะนอกจากวิดีโอแล้วในในส่วนที่เป็นสเปซเนี่ยจะมีเป็นตัวเท็กซ์ที่อานิดาเป็นคนคิดขึ้นหรือว่ากวีนะคะแต่ว่าจะเขียนด้วยเป็นไม่แน่ใจว่าเป็นหมึกอะไรนะที่เป็นสีขาวอยู่บนไวท์วอลแล้วว่าในระยะเวลาสุ่มสองสตางค์เนี่ยตัวหมึกเนี่ยมันก็จะจางหายไปนะคะ And that's because the words that I've created the entire poem from is made out of filed police reports that are hate crime reports so the language is very strong คำพูดเนี่ยก็เป็นรายงานจากของตำรวจนะคะที่เกี่ยวกับเรื่องของอาชญากรรมที่เกี่ยวกับเอ่อความ
ของความเกลียดชังเนี่ยมันก็เลยเป็นคำที่ค่อนข้างแรงแล้วก็มีความรุนแรงค่อนข้างเยอะเพราะว่าเป็นรีพอร์ตของตำรวจ So in 2000, this is um, documentation of the the piece that was vandalized, which is uh, another variation. Performed the poetry live before staining the wall that also had the words of the poem. And the idea is that the stain would bring out the words, and then they would remove the words from the wall, leaving the impression of what remains. But what happened was it it got vandalized by someone who decided that they would leave me a message on the wall. Chicago, and um, uh, it was the only uh, thesis project in its history that's been vandalized. But what happened was it forced the school and the community that the gallery was at to open their doors to people like this that usually don't go to those um, shows. You see a lot of Muslims, you see a lot of what we call people of color who came and who wanted to talk about what was happening. The school of the Art Institute Chicago at the Sullivan Galleries. Um, so I, I just wanted to put this in context because this is this is how we left the U.S. about uh, five years ago. And I felt like America was kicking my ass, literally out of America. Like, they don't want to hear any more of Anita's work. Like, this, this was it for me. I was like, I, I'm done. Like, I can't, I can't. หลังจากการที่เราเป็นสาเหตุที่ทำให้อนิดาตัดสินใจที่จะออกจากประเทศอเมริกานะเขาคิดว่าเขาไม่สามารถทำอะไรแบบนี้ได้แล้วแล้ว
and to really go there not knowing much about the context other than I was born in Cambodia. But even then, um, you know, <laughs> American politics sort of followed us, and so going there was because of my U.S. Fulbright Fellowship. That's what brought me and my family there was this opportunity to do research. Um, based on my um, artistic interest in um, creation mythologies and contemporary performance in Cambodia. Um, so we're going to roll this piece so that you can understand our journey because what happened was my research project intersected with a very specific community of deported individuals. Uh, so uh, we're, we're going to play this video and I just want you to understand that my research um, with the Fulbright work intersected with a community of people who were kicked out of the US on purpose. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice, and justice for all. Let me tell you about my Asian Americana. This is about Americana. My Asian Americana. My Americana. My Asian Americana. My Asian Americana. My Asian Americana. Here's my Asian Americana. Going to New Hampshire. Sunday morning, the leaves are changing. My sister sitting in front, bragging of all the stuff she would buy at the outlet. Thanksgiving. Apple pie, my lazy boy is behind her. Sitting there watching the game. Baseball games in Fenway Park. With all the guys, while my sisters and mom cooking the kids. The time is not much other than a handbrake. My niece and nephew running around like the chicken head cut off. Fourth of July, the sky is sparkling with fireworks. It's Halloween. It's work. I had to make my own costume because my parents never bought me. Christmas morning, wondering what hand me down clothes am I gonna get. Going down to San Jose, getting stuck underneath the overpass, so we all rent our inches at the same time. My mom's home cooking fried chicken. With ketchup and rice. Ramen in J Town in LA. New England team chowder. All you can eat Korean barbecue. Playing football during the snow time in New England. Not being able to swim my feet. Stop at the Greenfield exit. Saturday morning cartoon. My four chalupa. Thundercats. Two supreme. Old Chan. Two nacho cheese. Oklahoma. Wow. Got rice. Humble pecan. Got pho. Pumpkin pie. Got a dough. Talking about gang stuffing. That was good. I go cuckoo for cookies. And we go fishing. Then we'll run out of night trawlers. And what we use? Wonder bread. Yup, that works all the time, and that's my Asian Americana. <laughs> so up to this point, all these uh, people who grew up in the U.S. Uh, reminisce on their good memories of living in America as a nation. I am an exiled American. I can't go home. Can't go I am an American. of 
Americana, which is the memories that make them miss a place that they call home, which is America, but the difference is one group can never go back to America. So while on my Fulbright, we did this video and entered it into a White House contest to which we won the popular vote, but we were dismissed from claiming the win. So the, the controversy, uh, we, made, we did a press release on the controversy and the LA Times and Color Lines picked up the story and the answer that the White House, uh, the way the White House responded to it was they fired the intern who came up with the idea for the contest. <laughs> so during Obama's administration, who is the president that I voted for before leaving the country, he is known to have deported the most people from the U.S. in American history. And that's numbering nearly two million people, a lot of whom are Mexicans and people uh, from uh, Central, Central America and um, uh, Mexico, but also the Cambodians are also a small part of that. And it's really complicated, and we can discuss this later, or you can look it up. Um, but essentially, this work brought us Kosal Kyu, a poet, the man that you saw in the, the tattoos all over his body that's standing with somebody holding the American flag behind him. And that poet, um, he ended up serving uh, 14 years in an American prison when he was 16 years old. And when he served his entire period already, he served his sentence and then paid his debt to society. Instead of going home to his mom, he was sent to Cambodia. He wasn't born in Cambodia. He was born in a Thai refugee camp. But because of the secret uh, government deals that were made, he was sent to a country he had never been. ก็จะเห็นคนที่มีรอยสักเยอะๆที่มีคนถือธงชาติอเมริกันอยู่ข้างหลังคนนั้นน่ะเอ่อติดคุกตอนอายุ 16 แล้วก็ so the, the recent thing that we finished was a, a feature documentary. Uh, we're going to roll the trailer, and Masahiro is basically the filmmaker of this. No, 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 I'd like to roll the... Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit of why I write. It's a poem, the first piece we did with Kosal Masafiro Vision Kosal. Kosal Kyu,
can do it for her this life of mine. And let me show you your colors. So you can find this piece online. It's called Why I Write, and it also won for uh, Best Performance Poem at the Zebra uh, Berlin Film Festival, which is a poetry film festival. Um, Kosala is a very, very uh, special person in our life, and um, we've been very fortunate that our studio intersected with his path, and that we've been able to work on numerous projects with him to get his story out to the world. We knew that Cambodia would be too small to contain his story, that his story needed to go internationally. So um, as we worked with him, he received this unique invitation to represent Cambodia in something called the Poetry Parnassus at the London Games of 2012. Um, in London, they have this cultural aspect of it where they present all of this art, art stuff, um, art and culture related events um, leading up and during the actual Olympic Games. So Masahiro, who is not a documentary filmmaker, was essentially forced, because he's my husband, and because he was working so closely with Kosal, to make a documentary based on Kosal having this opportunity to represent Cambodia as a former incarcerated person, as a diaspora um, person, and as an ex-gang member, he would represent Cambodia in this biggest gathering of poets. <laughs> So we're gonna play this is Cambodian Sun, the trailer, and um, currently we are touring film festivals, and we've just um, uh, we we now are trying for international distribution. We're working with romance. We roll to your sides when the tear goes unnoticed from the eyes who deems it a weakness and those who can't cry. So here it is, all your whys and what is what should have been, what should have happened, what your life's supposed to be. You never ran the streets. You was told to ease up on that gun with the money and fame was too enticing. Life behind balls wasn't that brightening. So your eyes were silent on the fast like the lights and glamour. But then it all came crashing down like a hammer. It just seems to be how pop is just pissed off. He did not want to go to school, very rebellious and aggressive with his I've seen whole family crying with us all. That's true. You cannot run away from a problem. With us all? 
he got into a lot of trouble. What'd you do? He was a child. He wasn't thinking straight. And this magnitude, it was his time of his life to try and ask at all. So right now, um, uh, we are working with um, George, who's here in the audience, and Romance Production to take the film for international distribution. We've been very fortunate to have um, this Thai connection as well as a France French connection because uh, these folks have really believed in our film from the very beginning and we're very, very happy to announce that we have international distribution through them. Um, now, I, I, I want to take us to the work that, uh, that is is very different from that, but you'll you'll see that um, uh, for for us, you know, we do this very political work and the, all this narrative work, and then uh, we 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 do beautiful work. <laughs> <laughs> This is Niang Nat, which is going to be screened here.
So uh, that uh, that video was also um, it's based on the personal life story of Soplin Ch um, Shapiro, who uh, cho choreographed this. And uh, in the '80s, she moved to um, Los Angeles and experienced the sense of alienation due to her culture and the skin skin color, and she. Um, kind of manifested that in this piece as a snake goddess landing on earth and being laughed at for having a tail. She thought her experience of having a long black hair in California in the 80s was like that. She stood out and she didn't know how to fit in. So it, it portrays her process of coming to love herself again after hating it for who she is. เขาบอกว่าอันนี้เป็นเหมือนมีชีวิตเรื่องราวชีวิตส่วนตัวของเขาที่เป็นคอร์เรโกราฟหรือว่าคนที่เป็นนักเต้นคนนี้ด้วย
which uh, I don't know if we'll show here, but what we wanted to move to is this collaboration of the bug, who is also a diasporic um, uh, creation and, and in many ways an exiled body herself. So to connect that with some of the work we're doing with the deported community of exilers. Um, this work uh, has been ongoing and um, recently we just completed, as of like two weeks ago, this final stage called the Night Series, which will premiere at APT8 um, in Brisbane. And so we're gonna share with you a little bit of the work because in its final manifestation, it's going to be a two-channel video projection, a corner projection made of 20,000 images to create a time-lapse video alongside slow motion video. There is no sound. Yet. No. And this was never meant to be shown this way? Uh, this was never meant to be shown this way. This screen is supposed to be broken up into different compositions, but this is all we have right now. So we're just sharing it with the like, unprocessed part of the production. แล้วก็เขาบอกว่าชื่องานคือบุดิสต์ปักอ่ะนะคะพูดถึงความเป็นเอ่อเป็นโฟโต้ประมาณ <laughs> Um, the, the Buddhist bug is both Muslim and Buddhist. Now she, of course, when you look at her, you see that she is entirely orange and, and carries the saffron robes of the Buddhist monks. But, but then you'll notice that her hood is, is also very much um, following the hijab, the Muslim, um, the Muslim headscarf. คือถ้าเราเห็นจากลักษณะเราจะมีมันจะมีความผสมกันระหว่างศาสนาพุทธแล้วก็ศาสนาคริสต์ซึ่งจากสีซึ่งเราจะเห็นสีอาจารย์ศาสนานี้นะศาสนาอิสลามนะคะแล้วก็เราจะเห็นจากสีเนี่ยจะเป็นเอ่อเหมือนจีวรของพระสีส้มแล้วก็จากด้านบนเนี่
in Pumok Wing here, trying to figure out if perhaps she can get her bug on. Her boogie bug. Um, this was a really fun shoot here, and they look a lot better moving really, really fast than when they're sm slowly dancing. <laughs> Uh, and she's exploring the various uh, parts of the night in Phnom Penh. So both amongst the young population in terms of riding around, joy riding, around the independent monument and around uh, Phnom Penh's uh, streets, to the amusement park, to the, the nightclub, and then even the, the local bars. She ends up at a bar where, boy, there's a lot of uh, girls who are paying attention to mostly foreign men. And <laughs> she's wondering, oh, what, what's going on here? Um, and so, you know, she's watching all, of, all these uh, girls who are paying a lot of attention to a few men, and, and she's just watching them and uh, trying to figure out What's, what's going on here? She just wants a drink, maybe. I don't know if she drinks or not. Um, and uh, this this whole series, I mean, it's it's always for us like really difficult to 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 do all of this because it's it's usually it's a small team. There's a lot of people that are around. There's a lot of technical aspects with lighting the shots with. Um, Organizing the choreography, just you know, uh, um, b bodies and making sure you know the bug is still dominant. Um, uh, but it's been it's been a lot of fun. Um, this this is an early uh, generation of work, the very first generation of work here, um, with her going to a university. Can you just flip through it? Um, this is Spiral Alley that won the Sovereign Asian Art Prize, um, and you know, you can see what we like. What we like is everyday culture, everyday setting, and we know we're in a very special time in Phnom Penh where all of this will change because of the rapid speed of globalization and, and um, urbanization that's happening. The colonial building, all of that, we feel will, will be gone in 10 years. ถ้าเราจะเห็นเนี่ยเขาจะสนใจพื้นที่ที่เป็นสเปซเป็นเซนทรีเป็นเนาะชีวิตประจําวันหรือว่าสเปซที่มันอยู่ขึ้นเกิ
ือทุกคนเขารู้ว่าเป็นเป็นที่ดินของของครอบครัวของอันเนี้ยแต่ว่ามันไม่ไม่สามารถที่จะกลับเข้ามาแสดงความหรือว่าเคลมความเป็นเจ้าของของของสถานที่ในนี้ได้อีกนะคะ I think that the intersectionality of history and current moment is something that is a theme that runs throughout the work of Studio Revolt. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, I, I was just saying that I think that one of the running themes is the intersectionality of history and the current moment. That seems to be something prevalent in our work. คืองานของ Studio Revolt เนี่ยเป็นการ intersect หรือว่ารวมกันระหว่างเรื่องราวในอดีตแล้วก็สถานการณ์ในปัจจุบันที่เกิดขึ้นในประเทศกัมพูชานะคะเป็นการผสมผสานกันระหว่างสองส่วน And then one thing that I'm always interested in, and we're not even showing you the public art stuff because I didn't know that's what you wanted, but um, the work is always experienced by local people in a contemporary context. It's never done in a studio. This is what I mean by sound studio, without studio. It takes place like in real time, real life, real setting amongst Khmer people who don't get to go to the galleries, but out of all these years we've, we've been working there and all the projects we've done, I can safely say that thousands of people have seen our work as a result of placing it in the local context, all the performances, because this work doesn't exist without the performative um, elements. เขาบอกว่าสิ่งสําคัญของการงานของเขาเนี่ยมันคือการเข้าไปอยู่ในชุมชนการเข้าไปอยู่กับคนเขมรจริงๆซึ่งเขาบอกว่าจริงๆแล
about all your work, you know, your current research project, and both projects have always draw very close uh, connection with the history and trying to uh, re relate it to the present and show us the future. I think we need a break uh, for 10 or 15 minutes when you have a good coffee and prepare your questions. Thank you very much. Five minutes. Ten 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 minutes. Ten